morning, First Love family, and anybody else who might be listening. We want you in the family. Come on down, check us out. Um, we're broadcasting as usual from the podcast studio at First Love Church, the upper room. And uh, we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 29. So let's go with it. This is Paul. Let, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that may impart grace to the hearers. You know, the world is so corrupt and, and, and so foul that we can utter corrupt words without really even really realizing that we are. It's like I, I caught myself the other day and I, I was in my house and was walking around barefoot and looking at my texts. This is this, this, the stupidest stuff we do. And I slammed my shin into the coffee table. And I dropped that F-bomb hard and hearty. And it took me a few minutes to realize what I'd done. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that happens way more often than I, I want to admit. Corrupt words proceeding out of my mouth. Uh, you know, I should probably be afraid that I might say something like that from the pulpit. What the, you know, I, I, it, it's a reality. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. In other words, like my grandma used to say, and I'm sure most of your grandmas used to say, if you don't have something good to say, don't say anything at all. Gosh, that, that's... In, 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 in thought, that sounds like a relatively simple thing to accomplish, but in reality, not so much. I don't know, maybe I'm different from the rest of you all. Maybe I'm more crass and immature. I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me. Are you prone to letting one slip out? And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it might impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. If we are sealed, we should stay sealed. Our mouths should stay sealed. Our hearts should stay sealed. Our ears should stay sealed, except for to the things that are edifying before the Lord. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. Look at that. Uh, what are the roots of these things that we say that are, are should not be said? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor. I love that one, clamor. Because what clamor means is out of order. It just means, clamor just means things are not in the right place. Things are misplaced. That's what brings about clamor. And when I say things are misplaced, I'm normally talking about a thinking process, uh, and the thinking process is what leads to our heart condition, and our heart condition is what leads to these things, corrupt words, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. In other words, hate the evil, man. Hate the evil and love the light. And be kind to one another. Whoa, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you. I said in a message not too long ago, I said that um, he's taken us down off the cross where we belong and put his son in our place. He took us down off that cross where we belong and nailed his son up in our place. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. I was watching the Chosen series, now in season three or you know, way on season four, and uh, and and they did such a great job with the casting and with the acting because the guy who plays Jesus is—you feel the tenderness coming through the screen. You feel you can feel Jesus, and and, and the way he addresses situations or finds solution 
or create solution in events where there is malice, where there is uh, bitterness, where there is wrath and anger. But he goes on in chapter 5, starting in verse 1, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given us himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Not the stench of hellish intentions or hellish thinking, but a sweet-smelling aroma that goes up before God and pleases Him. I don't know if it could be a cake baking or a ribeye cooking or whatever it might, might, might be, but, you know, and those are two very distinctly different kinds of scents, but they're both pleasing. So whether we're smelling like a ribeye or smelling like fresh cupcakes, it's good. It's good. We can be edifying to God in a number of ways. In a song, in our head bowed before him in prayer, on our knees and singing in worship. All these different things are distinctly different, but they all are edifying before God. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. And then there's this, and this may be the hardest thing that we have to overcome, particularly for single people. But fornication, all uncleanness, or covetousness, covetousness simply means to keep wanting something that actually belongs to somebody else or that you're not entitled to or shouldn't be having. Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let us not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. It's this or that. It's either walking in love and walking in righteousness and holiness and truth or walking in the ways of the world. You can't really do both because if you're not walking in righteousness and truth and holiness, then you're leaving a door wide open for the other. You're leaving a, a door wide open for ungodliness and unrighteousness and, and, and foulness. And, you know, let's slam that door shut and open up that floodgate of love and peace and, and righteousness and uh, imitating God as dear children, walking in love. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. You know, sometimes I think that much of the church doesn't believe the word. Because here it clearly says that let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. Do not be partakers with them. And it says, you know, this you know, that no fornicator nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Do we just read right by that and then, and then go and take our, our, our fill of sin? Because after all, First John 1, 9 says, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is that just our uh, easy way out? Is that just uh, where, we, where we pollute and diminish the power of grace to just be a tool to wang wrangle our, our forgiveness from God. And, I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry. As we stuff a phone book down the back of our pants to protect us from the blows, the repercussions, the, the, the consequences of our sin. Nah, not good, man. Not good. So let's do this. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for sweet-smelling aroma. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, as the pastor of First Love Church, let me pray for this body of people, believers, that we do love you so much. And help us to walk in purity and in righteousness and in truth to imitate you. And as Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. What a bold thing for him to say. What a history he had in coming to that place of recognizing who you are. And I ask that everybody who's walking as Saul, 
wakes up and smells the coffee and ends up walking as Paul, the Apostle of Christ. I pray for the health and welfare of everybody in this church. Many of us are suffering, Lord God. In this last year, many of us have suffered. Many of us have lost their lives. Many of us have lost people in our lives. So we thank you and praise you for all the grace and all the mercy. But we ask you to extend it even more to those of us who are sick or suffering or broke or unemployed or have people they love who are sick and in problems, Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I was a dead man walking until you left this day. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.